Hey there, I'm your host the Bread Pirate, and today I want to talk to you about monsters in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and how they might be improved in the sequel. But before we get started, let me explain. I am in no way saying that monsters in Breath of the Wild were bad. You are a bad guy, but this does not mean you're a bad guy. I just believe that there's always room for improvement. So, following that train of thought, one of the ways I think enemies could be improved in the sequel is by making them do things. Cause let's face it, enemies in Breath of the Wild didn't do a whole lot. They like to look menacing, but they never do anything menacing, aside from attacking travelers. They have camps around Hyrule, but we never see them travel between camps. And although the many bosses in the world are certainly a challenge, they're also stationary, restricted to pacing back and forth. I'd like to see monsters that are livelier, more active, and, for lack of a better term, busier. NPC Hostility Monsters in Breath of the Wild were definitely hostile towards NPCs around Hyrule, but these encounters rarely included more than a single traveling merchant or a few citizens collecting mushrooms. I propose that monsters begin a full-blown campaign of hostility. I'm talking about capturing NPCs, battling knights around Hyrule, assuming there are knights in the sequel raiding towns, and generally stealing stuff which doesn't belong to them. In turn, this would give the player more things to do, such as rescuing captured Helians, saving towns, and retrieving stolen goods. This would also make monsters feel like more of a threat in the world. And who doesn't love that? Travel. It's one word, but with a lot of potential. Like I said at the beginning of the video, enemies don't leave their encampments. Even horseback the goblins, the guys who should be running around Hyrule the most, don't move more than 100 feet from their starting point. What if instead monsters took advantage of the roads around Hyrule to transport stolen goods and supplies for their camps? I can already picture a squad of moblins carrying crates of bananas to their secret lair. <laughs> it just works. When it comes to water travel, I want to see enemies on boats. Full-fledged naval warfare. Bring back watchtowers and add some rafts. I want to feel like I'm playing Wind Waker, gosh darn it. And I would be reminisce if I didn't mention travel by air. We saw Octorok powered flight in Breath of the Wild, and how hard is it to believe that Bagoblins wouldn't just add a propeller to the back of their machines? Use your imagination. Many bosses. They are some of the most boring things in the world to look at if you aren't engaging them in combat. Here are my suggestions on how to spice them up just a little bit. I always thought it was strange that Henoxes and Begoblins didn't exist together. Henoxes are basically just giant Begoblins after all. So in the sequel, what if Begoblins and Moblins began to worship Henoxes as clan leaders? We might even see lower level enemies bring tribute to Henoxes, giving Link an opportunity to interrupt the ceremony and take all the loot for himself. When it comes to Lynels, I see them as the perfect hunters. So in the sequel, I think we should see them hunting wild animals for food. It's just a little bit of an Easter egg, something interesting so that they aren't just pacing back and forth. As for the Stone Talus, I think it would be great if the goblins accidentally woke up a Stone Talus in the middle of a mining operation trying to collect minerals. This could give Link an opportunity to use the confusion as a way of taking down the Stone Talus better, or maybe it could just create an interesting battle overall as you have to deal with Begoblins at the same time as the Stone Talus. Clearly, these are just ideas, but who knows? Maybe we'll get to see the life of the mini-boss better in the sequel. Remember, I respond to every comment. Until I see you next time, have fun storming the castle.